tech geek and a prominent speaker at uh, tech events and uh, he is a catalyst at uh, axway so without uh, further ado um, the stage is all set for uh, uh, uli to share about uh, how to build a community around the open source project thank you so much suba and uh, can i just ask you since we are not having the pleasure of being in the real world do you see me do you see my slides yes uh, yes i can see your slide that's great okay. thank okay. you uh, uli I'll and get I'll, back to you five minutes before I'll, the thing with Q and I was I was going to say so I'm, I'm I have around twenty minutes and we take like five minutes for questions, mm. or or these these kinds yeah, of sure. things, right? Okay, everyone. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, and let's let's get started. Um, well, I'll say a few things about myself in in just a moment. Um, um, in Jakarta very often, and obviously in the last couple of months, I haven't been able to, to go there. I look forward when we can do this again. But, uh, you know, if, if anything, then we have learned what Zoom is and what uh, Teams and, and all the other communication platforms do. So um, I'm based in Singapore, and uh, I can't wait to travel to Jakarta again. Today we want to talk about, uh, and, and well, and I do appreciate that, that many of you have stayed on so long to, uh, um, for the afternoon sessions. We wanna talk about how do you run open source projects? A lot of people use open source day in, day out. They may not even be aware of it, but uh, you know, how do you contribute and how do you run an open source project, right? So that is that is the question that we are we are asking ourselves. How do you, how do you run a project like this? And of course the answer, and I'm sure you, you get the, the, the drift, the answer is uh, not very serious. Many people think it's it's very easy. You just take the code, you dump it on GitHub, and and you're done. That's not exactly how it works, and that's why I'm uh, hoping you have some time for me today to to listen to the story. And I have something if you want. So it's it's completely like play your own adventure. I'll have something for you hands on to try out. If you are in the in the API world, if you are familiar with curl, the command line, and the likes. And if you just want to hear the story, that's that's fine too. But yeah, uh, really, a few words about myself. I'm a I'm a catalyst at, at Axway. Uh, I'm also a developer advocate. You see a couple of previous work experiences on the right side. So when you look at when you look at the logos, you see um, um, well where I've previously worked. I'm part of Asia and specifically Southeast Asia since almost ten years, and like I said in my introductions, Jakarta is a place that I've uh, traveled to uh, a lot. And uh, I look forward to meeting every one of you in person at, at the next API days in Jakarta. Uh, until then, I, I do invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm extremely active there. I post a lot of stuff. I write articles. Many, uh, let, let me start the sentence differently. I, I always appreciate when people take uh, photos of, of slides when I when I present in in uh, in person. Um, maybe you are taking screenshots. That's great. But uh, typically, all the slides that I present at uh, my meetup um, are on my GitHub repository. The handle is Uli Slides, and even the deck for the presentation that you're seeing right now is already available on uh, this this Git repository. So I invite you to 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 check it out there. The other resource, and then I'm almost done <laughs> giving giving you uh, links to click on and uh, sites to check out, is um, a site called apigeek.net. And that's even a little more interesting because it's more specific to uh, some of the slides that I use uh, for events, but also some of the open source projects that I'm running and some of the hacks in the, IP, in the API world that I have done. So, um, you see some of the logos on the right side. So these are just four selected projects. So these are open source projects that uh, all somehow deal with APIs. And some of them are uh, dealing with a certain exposure to APIs. So the Yoisho Bank, the blue logo you see on the on the bottom, is an is an open banking implementation um, in in Docker and also with with live events. You will see um, a bit of this later in my presentation. There is Keju, which is basically a, I'll say it's a weekend project where I've implemented an API gateway in Python and it becomes 
a 25 megabyte Docker container. The idea really is not to, you know, use it in production, but for our testing, for education, for training purposes. It's, it's a very simple API gateway that allows you to do basic authentication and API keys. And, you know, you don't need a massive infrastructure just to, to play with it and understand how our API gateways work. Um, two of the things that I wanted to show you a little closer today is the two projects on the right. So one of them is Bambleweenie. This is a, an HTTP-based key value store and message broker. It's basically Redis in a box with an API gateway and an OAuth provider in front of it, and Majime, which deals with API unit testing. And I'll show you this because what, these are open source projects and I'm more or less successful with some to get engagement because that's, that's what we want to talk about. Right? So Majime, what does it do? Well, in essence, you know, um, uh, part of um, the things that I'm doing at the moment, I'm also teaching DevOps at the National University in Singapore. And when we talk about pipelines, and I believe the previous speaker has spoken about uh, DevOps and GitOps and, and CI/CD pipelines, uh, this is pretty much sorted out when we when we are talking about applications, right? How do I uh, use Git? How do I use Docker? How do I put them in a pipe? and so on, how do I deploy them on any of the clouds or on OpenShift or Kubernetes. But semantically, what, what if I want to test an API, right? And it's not just about a one-time thing. We understand APIs change all the time, right? If they, they take iterative deployments. And uh, hopefully by now we all understand that having a contract, having a Swagger definition, having an open API specification is not just nice to have. If we have, the API spec in place, we can render documentation. We can generate SDKs. We can create beautiful API portals almost automatically. Um, but if we are adding new features to our API, if we are uh, keeping evolving our API, we also need to make sure that the API contract is still uh, valid. So at some point, I couldn't really find, I was playing with Postman, there was, there was a few other a few other things. What if I want to have a CI/CD integration to test if the API endpoint that I have is actually doing what the contract says? And that's what Majimi is for, right? So imagine you wanted to run this, um, the couple of test points, a couple of test cases that you have against the endpoints. You would get an output like this, right? And uh, you'll see in in more detail what what this will look like. So you see there is a couple of test cases that worked and a couple of test cases that failed. So this is something that you would get if you, uh, if you run this interactively. But in a, in a, in a CI CD pipeline, obviously, you want JSON output. You want something that you can pass, something that a machine can understand, uh, so you can integrate this. Right? Um, test case, so I don't want to get too much into the details. I just want to introduce that project uh, to you. The test cases are defined in YAML, right? So you have a, YAML is a, is a well-known format when it comes to uh, structuring configuration files. So in this case, uh, this, is, this is my uh, format of choice. You see the, how the test cases are uh, formatted. If you have worked in the API world before, you will understand that this is, this is simple, simple to get. So the first one is, is trying to do a get method on a specific um, ATM. Right, and then the second part is a is a put request and so on, and you will say, okay, that that's great, but you know, how, how do I know how to use that format? Very easy. Um, the tool is even able to generate the test cases for you based on a Swagger definition, and um, you are able to ma um, manually update the test cases so they do the things that you want to test, and so on and so on. Right. So what I meant. Earlier, right? So this is this is basically the output. If you are generating this, you you'll say uh, here is here is the pet store uh, swagger, and please generate the test cases for me. And you see, it'll generate this kind of output. So um, if you want to try this out, and I encourage you to do so, you would you would simply um, Click on this link. I'm not sure you you're probably not able to click on this link in, in in the in the presentation here, but it's it's something that you will find 
when you click on my Git repository. The time is now, right? You can always try this later, but maybe you don't have the time. So you could you could just decide to follow this exercise. It's it's leveraging the Google Cloud Shell. I was actually very excited when when Google launched in Jakarta uh, a couple of months ago. So I've also used some of the services there. If you want to do this exercise, there is nothing you have to install locally. And even if you use the Google Cloud Shell, there is nothing you have to pay for. Um, the exercise is available here. So you might as well just take a screenshot and use it at any point in time that you like. And well, the um, the demo is using a couple of open banking API points, is which is a project that I've started uh, a couple of years ago, because you know many of our customers, many of the people that we work with, are uh, in the FSI space. And as much as I like Pet Store APIs and Star Wars APIs, this is only getting us so far if we want to educate uh, people about the benefits of APIs. So. If you if you look at the project, and I'll, I'll just show you briefly what the uh, the GitHub page for this looks like. The, the, these are basically a couple of open banking related Docker containers, and it's it, you find all the source code here. So these are Python projects, right? So there is there is um, um, an endpoint for credit card balance for account info. It even has OAuth in front of it. There is stock quotes, deposit calculators, ADM locator, and that and that kind of stuff. Um, you'll find everything on the apigeek.net websites, the links. You can download the containers. You can uh, consume the live endpoints if you want to do trainings or POCs. And, and ultimately, and that's why I'm also showing this to you today, um, I want to make sure that people use it more and they may even be interested in helping in making this better, right? So you see here ATM locations. You, you would just be able to consume the Swagger APIs. You can trigger requests to the endpoints and so on. So how, how do you run an open source project? Right? How, how do you go about this? I've seen um, several um, presentations on this topic, um, and I'm showing you some of the ideas. But I can uh, you can basically see from what I've just showed you that I've done this myself. And uh, some of them have really picked up. So the the Yoisho Open Banking, um, I see a few thousand requests every day on um, on the live endpoints. When you look at the when you look at the containers, you see that oh, this is actually the uh, uh, the screenshot of the. There is a developer portal as well now. But you you see here some of the containers. So the the, con the currency container has been pulled uh, thirteen hundred times and so on. So I do invite you to check it out. But how do you run an open source project, right? So open source is open community powered innovation. It's extremely uh, popular these days. It's, it's everywhere. Even commercial products contain open source components, or at least they interact with them um, by default, because open source is everywhere. It's, it's like Wikipedia, right? So. But just like in Wikipedia, we also need people who are contributing. We can't just read Wikipedia. There's got to be people who, who help write it and keep it up to date. Right? So obviously, when, when, when you talk to people about open source, you say, oh my god, that, that's, that's weird. Are you saying I need to give everything away for free? People will see my code. People will use my stuff, and they don't even pay me for it. Right? So it brings, us in, it brings us back to what I said about Wikipedia about open source right um i don't think any any company would be able to to keep something like wikipedia up and running in in that many languages constantly up to date it's got to be people who believe that we can make the world a better place if we collaborate and uh you know even even uh commercial enterprises rely on open source models where they involve the community to create projects and there is a way to create commercial offerings that allow more government, more governance and specific enterprise features for a fee. So innovation, co-creation, open source, something extremely powerful. And it's no longer uh, where it was uh, a few decades ago. Open source has, has arrived in the enterprise world. Many people ask me, and they say, you know, um, how can I contribute? It's 
I'm not a coder. And, and I'll tell you, if you use it, you are already contributing. Ideally, you'll find something that doesn't work. And I can tell you that's quite often the case because in a distributed world like today, it's impossible to build something that works everywhere in every scenario. The things change all the time, right? So use it. If something doesn't work, open a ticket in GitHub. You can open an issue. Start spreading the word. Run meetups. Or, you know, you might even just, just help to uh, translate the English documentation in, in Bahasa, Indonesia. That's, that's contribution, right? So you don't necessarily need to be uh, a Java developer or, or, or a Python guy to contribute. And why do it? I've, I've already mentioned, mentioned it. It's, it's, it's maybe about making the world a better place, giving back to the community. You may make some new friends across the world. You might, you might, you might even not having to do everything yourself because you find somebody in Brazil has a similar idea and you do something together. You get inspiration, you grow. And it's it's very rewarding and, and a lot of fun. I'll and and plus, I mean, I'm a Python developer, so you end up being in the App Store. It's it's the Python package index. It's not the Play Store or the App Store, but it's something, something something similar, right? I'll give you an example. Last year, um, in in February, I got this email, and it says, "Oh yeah, congratulations, you submitted this talk, and uh, you are now." a speaker at the event in San Francisco. So I was actually able to go to my employer and say, oh, wow, I have this huge problem now. My my talk at the Redis conference was accepted. And, and can I please fly there? And actually, I went there. So I had a I had a great time. Right? But this is this is some of the rewards that you get when when you get involved in the open source project. But still, we haven't really answered the question, how do you run an open source project? And uh, I'm, I'm quoting a fellow geek in the in the industry. You see her profile here. Being a developer is one thing, right? But you can be the best developer if if you are not sharing uh, and if you are not you know reaching your audience. So you got to be a marketing person as well, to some extent at least. You have to find a way to make it relevant um, to reach the community. And since we are talking about the live project, you're not just dumping the code somewhere. Well, you, you got to manage incoming requests. You got to find a way to deal with issues, with strange requests, with the scope. And yeah, you know, you got to be very specific about what you want to achieve with the project and manage it this way. So I think this this uh, summarizes it pretty pretty well. Personally, I don't think I'm 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 yet there where I want to be. I think I'm I'm somewhere in the middle-ish. But at least if you if you see my GitHub, you'll see that. Uh, there is a lot of projects, and there is people who start to fork and clone and contribute. So I'm, I think I'm on my way. More specifically, I think if, if you want to run a project, you will, will you will be probably do something that you're passionate about, something that you would use for yourself, right? So that's 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 the first part. And the second part is, ideally, you turn it into a living thing. If you dump it on GitHub and you forget about it, it's not going to live. The project needs to have its existence on GitHub, right? So make sure there is markdown. Make make sure that you are accepting issues, that you have certain versions, that you create releases, that you accept contributions and pull requests. That's maybe the second thing. And the third part is marketed, right? So you've seen me choosing a couple of logos. Uh, some interesting names. Even if at the beginning the project doesn't do much, make sure this, that the documentation is superb. Make sure that people who are using it, they're having a great 20 minutes experience because developers have a choice. If, if the tool's not good enough, if you can't figure out how to install it, they're not going to use it. And the last one maybe is, you know, we have a lot of meetups these days. There is API days, there is scale in Jakarta, there is um, API craft in Jakarta, promote it, get in touch with the organizers and, and speak about it. Um, so just very briefly, that this is this is the other project that I mentioned. It's it's Bambleweenie. It's it's the HTTP uh, REST key value store. The value proposition really is, and, and uh, I realize we are not having enough time to, to cover this. Get in touch with me if you are if you are interested in a in a detailed discussion. But it actually allows you something to do 
that you would do with Kafka or, or with Redis on a, on a big scale, but you are running a POC and you want to build something in one day, right? So you want to you wanna have um, a way for systems to connect with each other, like a WhatsApp, um, but you, you don't have the time, the money, the energy to install Kubernetes, Kafka, MongoDB, and all these kinds of things. You just want to have something really quick. Then you use MongoDB, right? I personally use it a lot to mock API endpoints, to mock dynamic API endpoints, more specifically. You see some of these examples here. Um, but that's that's just one way of doing it. So it's it's extremely easy to run, right? It's it's a it's a Docker project. So if you want to run it, that's the only command that you need. And it doesn't matter if you are on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, or on OpenShift, on Kubernetes, on AWS, Azure, or GCP. It's it's easy to consume, and that's that's one of the key points in getting things started. I'll not give you the details about the, the client library. That's my presentation. Basically, what I want from you is, um, if you have a chance, try it out. Look at the projects, look at API Geek. Ultimately, what I'm doing today is the same what I'm teaching and preaching you, get the word out, encourage people to get involved and make it better, and spread the word. And uh, I'll say thank you so much. This is, this, this is it for me. I think we are on time, 20 minutes. Luba, back to you. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Uli. I wish I, uh, I would have met you a year before uh, when I was working with uh, Axiata, and uh, they were uh, uh, they were seeking desperate people who could actually build this community around their uh, their API gateway. And uh, unfortunately, it's never too late. It's uh, never too late. And then, unfortunately, I mean, I already moved out of Axiata now. So okay, but anyway, okay. maybe someone in Axiata would would uh, would try to use their services. It's, it's it's very uh, personally uh, uh, it's very important knowledge because I'm coming from a, a mix of big business, a mix of functional background, and understanding how actually um, APIs uh, uh, APIs could help you in an open source uh, uh, environment where people could contribute, uh, give feedback, and then uh, the way you you have actually break down into pieces. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I'm sure that audiences would also have uh, comments uh, right now that they, they don't have. But uh, I'm sure uh, uh, they would be interested. Thank you again, uh, Uli. Really enjoyed the presentation. I'll it's be going back to your uh, GitHub and uh, trying to see the documentation there. OK, awesome. Thanks, Duba. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Then. And you.